I think really you have to grow out of your size and you have to somehow transcend uh, the factors that limit you. So if population is limiting and there is a limit to what population this little island can contain, then you look at a larger region, ASEAN. One example. It's not the only uh, strategy we are pursuing, but ASEAN comprises 10 countries today with a GDP of $2.2 trillion, which is bigger than that of India. If we can integrate the economies of ASEAN, and by 2015 we will have an ASEAN um, you know, common vision, not quite a common market, but we are down to, we have brought the tariffs down on 85% of the items. The remaining 15% are difficult. We are continuing to try. Bring the tariffs down on services, which is not going to be easy. But if you do these things, then this entire region becomes integrated economically, free movement of people, goods, services, infrastructure that links the different countries of ASEAN, ports, railroads, roads, airports, people-to-people -people movement, increased cultural, social activity, but also increased economic activity. $2.2 trillion will place ASEAN as the ninth largest economy in the world, bigger than that of India. So we, sitting in Singapore, if we plan it right and get it right and remain very focused on what we do, we can become the New York for this entire ASEAN region. Now that is a vision that will transcend all the difficulties we have. So we have to transcend we work very hard at creating a common ASEAN vision. Uh, we're building industrial parks in Vietnam. We do things in Indonesia, Malaysia, Iskanda, Malaysia. And we are investing in Thailand. We have a close economic relationship with China. And China's growth integrates very well with ASEAN's growth. I was in Beijing a few days ago. China has proposed an increased, enhanced China-ASEAN free trade agreement. So that means more. Today, only 20% of the goods that we manufacture in this region stay in this region. Even if we export to China, ultimately it ends up in the US. We hope that with greater consumption in China, that percentage can go up to 40, 50%. Regional wealth, regional prosperity can boom. But for that, China needs to be stable. There probably has to be an absence of conflict between China and Japan. There has to be an absence of conflict between China and the other claimant states in South China Sea. There has to be peace between us and our neighbors. So we work very hard on those issues. Some of it directly impinge on us, some of which don't, but we have an interest. But this vision of us in ASEAN is one. And the other is that increasingly the world, the world economies are going. They go for nodal centers rather than countries. So if we can become a great international nodal center that attracts the best talent, that attracts a capital, and that can service from Singapore, large regions, not just ASEAN, that can create economic value.